Hi everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor. Today's video is a remake of the one that I had made two years back. But one thing that I can assure you is that the explanation, the audio and video quality are going to be awesome. And in this series, I'll remake almost 9 to 10 problems. But before you start to watch this video, I would recommend all of you to go ahead and watch my video on orthographic projection as well as projection of point because that's where you're going to develop your concept. Well, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description down below and also in the I button at the top right portion of your screen. And if you've already seen that, well, why wait? Let's begin. What we'll try to do in this video is to make the orthographic projection for seven different points, say from A, B until we reach G. And in order to do that, we first need to know as to where that point is lying, whether it is lying in the first, second, third or the fourth quadrant. And once we know this, the second thing that we need to know is at what distance that point is from the vertical plane as well as from the horizontal plane. And guys, remember, distance from the HP is represented by small h, distance from the VP is represented by small d. Also remember that distance could either be above the HP or below the HP, that is small h, and distance could either be in front of the vertical plane or behind the vertical plane. Okay, and that is represented by small d. Now, let's extract data from each and every description of seven different points given to us. So, A is in the HP and 20 mm behind the VP. So, let me have a quadrant system, right? This is first quadrant, that's second quadrant, that's third quadrant. This right over here is the fourth quadrant. And that's a vertical plane. And this over here is the horizontal plane and the intersection of HP and VP somewhere here is what is referred to as the XY line or the reference line or the intersection line simply for HP and VP for the two planes. Anyway, for the front view and top view, these are the arrows. This is going to be for the front view and this is going to be for the top view. And guys, if you're straight away coming to watch this video, I would suggest all of you to go ahead and watch my video on the concept of projection of points and that's exactly where I had explained the HD principle okay and once you see that this is going to be super super easy for you all all right and I'll link leave a link to that in the description down below and also in the I button somewhere here anyway A is in the HP okay in the horizontal plane and 20 mm behind the VP just try to think in which quadrant is this point A going to lie okay the options could be multiple let me tell you so point A is precisely here. This distance is behind the VP. That's going to be 20. And since it is in the HP, it is in the HP, H is going to be zero. And since it is behind the VP, this is distance is 20 millimeters, quadrant status. Well, some of you guys may say, sir, it is lying in the second quadrant. Some of you guys may disagree. So this lies in the third quadrant. Well, I would say that it is a case of both. That is second as well as third quadrant. Just think about this. Yes, it is a case of both second as well as third quarter doesn't matter which hd principle you apply and when you speak of second quadrant h and d both are above the xy line when you speak of third quadrant d is above the xy line and h is below the xy line so let me reiterate that again doesn't matter which hd principle you follow you all are going to end up making the same orthographic projection so let me just write over here second oblique third both of them are perfect okay some of you guys can draw this with the help of second quadrant hd principle of second quadrant and some of you may just use the hd principle for third quadrant done let's talk about this point b 40 mm above the hp okay above the hp we have two options it could either be first or second we just need to work out whether the point is in front or behind the vp if it's in front then we'll say that the point is in the first quadrant and if it is behind well the option is uh, quadrant number two let's read this again 40 mm above hp and 25 mm in front of vp well it's pretty obvious in front of the vp that means it's a case of first quadrant okay 40 mm above hp that means above hp this distance is 40 distance from hp is 40 okay and in front of vp how much and that's 25 that's 25 okay the distance from the vp is represented by small d always remember this and it's a clear-cut case of first quadrant now let's try to work out point c 
Okay, let's try to analyze this in a proper way. So here we go. It's in the VP. All right. Since it is in the VP, so the distance of point C from the VP is going to be how much? It's going to be equal to zero. Okay. What's next? And 40 mm above the HP. Now, guys, again there are multiple options. Here we go. This is going to be point C. This distance right here. This distance is how much in the VP and 40 mm above the HP. That's 40. That's it. This is the precise location of point C. Again, some of you guys may say, sir, this is a case of first quadrant. Some of you guys may say that this is a case of second quadrant. I would say it's a case of both the quadrants. Okay, it's in the border. You can say um, so. Point C is a case of both the quadrants. That is first as well as second quadrant, and the height at which it is above the horizontal plane is 40 millimeters. So let me write, let me write just 40 over here. That's it. Now let's try to work out the precise location of point D. 25 mm below HP. Okay, it's below HP. That means it could either be third or fourth. Well, let's read this further. 25 mm behind, behind the VP. Behind the VP, that means it's a clear cut case of quadrant three. Here we go, that's point D. 25 below and 25 behind. This is 25 below, 25 below, and this is below HP, that is over here, and 25 behind the VP. This is 25 behind the VP, okay? This is also 25. And this is a clear cut case of quadrant number three. Done and dusted. Let's, let's, Try to work out point E. 15 mm above HP. Okay, above HP we have two quadrants, quadrant one and quadrant two. Okay, 50 mm behind the VP. Behind the VP there is only quadrant two or second quadrant, and this is the precise location of point E. 15 mm above HP. So above HP it's 15 mm. Above HP it's 15 mm. That's why H is 15 and 50. 50 mm behind the VP. This distance is 50 distance from vertical plane is 50 okay and this is pretty much simple clear-cut case of a point situated in the second quadrant and f point f will 40 mm below hp and 25 mm in front of vp well what about this 40 mm below hp below hp we have two options quadrant 3 quadrant 4 25 mm in front that means it's a clear-cut case of quadrant number 4 here we go that's point f 25 mm in front of VP. This is 25 in front of VP and 40 mm below HP. Below HP, the distance is 40. So this has got to be 25 and this has got to be 40, 4, 0. It's a clear cut case of a point being situated in the fourth quadrant. That's it. Now there is only one point left and that's point G, which is lying both in the HP and VP. Just think about this, if a point is in the HP as well as in the VP, um, in which quadrant is that point situated? Just think about this. Well, that point is situated in all the quadrants, you can say, okay? Because that point is right here onto this intersection line, which is a part of HP as well as a part of VP, which is in fact a part of first, second, third, as well as fourth quadrant. That's it. This is the precise location of point G. So its distance from HP is nothing. 0 distance from VP is also nothing but 0 and uh, you can say so it is lying in this first quadrant some of you guys will say it is lying in the second quadrant third quadrant or the fourth quadrant doesn't matter which HD principle you follow all of you are going to end up making the same orthographic projection that is the same front and top views and let me tell you something it's front view and top view both of them are going to coincide at one single point and that point will also lie on the reference line or on the what do you call the xy line now now let us shift to the next slide where we'll try to make the orthographic prediction and here we go so let's start with point a and what is the policy for point a h and d both of them above the xy line okay when you speak of third quadrant d above and h below now guys you need to remember this Whenever you are working with H, always put a dash, okay? And the dash corresponds to a front view. Let me try to make this in a proper way. And the dash corresponds to a front view. Whenever you are dealing with D or dimension D, you don't have to put a dash. Uh, 
no dash let me just write no dash and no dash corresponds to a top view always remember this okay with a dimension h you have to put a dash that means a front view with a dimension d no dash that means it's a top view so let's begin okay let me follow this second quadrant policy h and d both of them above the xy line so we have this h how much is h h is 0 that means you don't have to go above it's right there in the xy line somewhere here okay with h you need to put a dash it's going to be a dash and then d is also upstairs upwards how much it's 20 so you need to travel 20 millimeters above and this no dash okay that's 20 so this is the projection or orthographic projection for a point situated in the first or in the second quadrant or in the third quadrant okay well i would recommend all of you i would suggest all of you to make this with the help of this policy this policy third quadrant you are going to end up making this diagram okay let's talk about point b well point b is lying in the first quadrant the value of h is 40 the value of d is 25 and as far as first quadrant is concerned h is always above and d is below that means dash will be above and no dash will be below okay so it's going to be something of this sort h above 40 above dash and how much below 25 below no dash that's it okay the distance between these two projectors have to be taken as 25 millimeters so um, i would advise all of you to make points 25 millimeters apart and then start this projection okay so that was all about point a and b now let's try to work out point c okay point c it lies first quadrant or second quadrant now let me try to make this with the help of first quadrant policy h above and d below okay so what's the value of h it's 40 so 40 above with a dash something of this sort this is 40 and how much below zero below that means we are right here we're right here okay this dimension zero okay is d no dash that's it's going to be c this is the front view stop view this is the front view that is the top view this is the top view because it is without a dash and this is the front view it is with a dash okay d third quadrant d above and h below okay so it's going to be something of this sort d above without a dash h below with a dash how much below 25 how much above 25 both of them are exactly same point e well it lies in the second quadrant h and d both of them above the xy line so 15 above you need to make a point and that will and that is the front view let me try to make this 15 above okay since this dimension is 15 is h so you have to put a dash right and in the same manner you need to further travel from here you need to travel above by a distance of how much 50 and that dimension is d that means you don't have to put a dash that's e simple okay so we've worked out almost five points let's let's try to fix this point f okay if you watch carefully it lies in the fourth quadrant that means h and d both of them are below this xy line front and top views both of them will be below the xy line so the value of h is 40 let's travel 40 okay let me do this in a proper way this dimension 40 will be for the front view okay as this is h this is 40 f dash and this dimension 25 this is 25 right this is dimension d you don't have to put a dash and that's precisely the location for the top view done finally this point g it lies in all the quadrants the value of h and d are zero you neither have to travel up or down it's right here right here h is also zero d is also zero so g dash and g are going to coincide done doesn't matter if you write g dash above or g below or both of them above or both of them below it makes absolutely no difference it's a clear-cut case of a point situated or of a point being a part of all the four quadrants okay because it is on the intersection line of both HP as well as VP. So guys, that was all for my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has enhanced your knowledge of engineering drawing, well, 
then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you get a notification you get an update well i'm going to be back with more such remake videos on drawing until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day keep learning thank you